G'day guys and gal, you're probably thinking one of two things right now. Either, gee whiz Major Kill, what a super awesome interesting video idea. Also, your hair looks great today and I'd love for you to ravage me. Or, Major Kill you demented drongo, didn't you already make this video a while ago? Kind of, I made a video that was the broad strokes of how the galaxy reacted to Gilliman's resurrection. And while I did glaze over the Imperium's response, I missed out on some of the most interesting reactions, many of which were actually negative. Not everyone was happy that the Lord of Ultramar was here to save the day. There were purges, conflicts, and even many civil wars. The Ecclesiarchy and Gilliman also have this weird relationship, with G-Man despising them but realizing their value, whilst the Ecclesiarchy tries to gargle his prime balls. The point I'm making is that there were very nuanced, interesting, and unexpected reactions within the various Imperial factions that deserve a deeper look. After all, Gilliman's resurrection has been the girthiest piece of lore we've gotten in years, and it's worth playing around with. But before we get started, there are about 50 Major Kill merch hoodies left of both colors, and I really want to move on from these and start planning something new and awesome. So if you buy a Major Kill hoodie, you'll get not one, but two t-shirts free. T-shirts come in the same size as the hoodie and are of different colors. After this week, the remaining hoodies and t-shirts are getting binned. So I thought, why not just give you guys some delicious value, get the hoodies in the hands of more people and prevent some rubbish from ending up in the landfill. In terms of pure quality, it just doesn't get much better. The hoodies are soft, warm, and durable. I've run this through the washer and dryer many times and it hasn't shrunk or lost its, you know, hoodiness. Nor have the designs or anything faded at all. I also specifically requested these types of t-shirts that were a great cut, meaning if you work out and wear one, it's no Noticeable. However, if you don't, then it's not. Basically, by making it hug around the chest and then baggy around the stomach, you'll look good no matter what your physique is actually like. Link in description. Let's get these boys to a good home. Today, we'll go deep into the lore of each Imperial sub-faction's reaction to Gilliman's resurrection, ranging from unhappy space marines to the custodians that considered murdering Gilliman, all the way to the Imperial Navy, who have some harsh opinions of their own. Uh, let's get into it. <laughs> Despite a bit of controversy that we'll dive into today, the overall reaction to Gilliman's return was overwhelmingly positive. He was a son of the Imperium's God, returned to them at their hour of need. It literally was the most Jesus-esque messiah bullshit ever that did nothing but confirm and elevate their beliefs. The Ultramarines were ecstatic and instantly more or less reformed their legion under his banner without question, helping Gilliman to reach Terra. Imperial forces on Terra were more than friendly to G-Man, with the Sisters of Silence helping him to defeat Mag Magnus, and then the Custodian Guard fighting alongside him at the Lion's Gate during a very random Cornite invasion of Terra. All in all, a very good first impression that, that went a long way to affirming Gilliman's return as a genuine boon for the Loyalists, and not just some cheeky, schemey shit by Titsnitch. In saying that though, the Custodies did not trust Gilliman. The Primarchs had ruined their Lord's dream and doomed mankind to a slow decay, but they also really didn't give a shit. They were literally like, boo-hoo, Mr. Mathematics has returned with his big space book. The Custodies know the truth of the Imperium what occurred during the Horus Heresy and what the Primarchs were like. They honestly just didn't really give much of a shit. They were happy for Gilliman to take leadership of the Imperium as that still didn't give him authority or command over the Custodian Guard. It was only when Gilliman met with his father and then the Emperor gave the Custodians the order to help Gilliman via his emissaries, which are special Custodians who can speak to the Emperor in their dreams, did they step up to the plate and actually begin working with him. At this point, they were well and truly Team G-Man, with a number of them even actually being inspired by him and admiring him. They never totally trusted him though. Many of the custodians with him theorized how many of them it would take to kill him, and they had numerous contingencies in case the Lord of Ultramar went rogue. The Sisters of Silence were in a similar boat to the custodians, although a lot less expressive. I'll tie the reaction of the Sisters of Battle to that of the Ecclesiarchy. The Sisters of Battle haven't had much screen time with G-Man, however their panties have been destroyed by the female ejaculate equivalent of Niagara Falls. They are hyper-religious, so seeing Gilliman return is like the fucking best. I mean, the sisters literally shit the bed whenever they see a custodian guard, so imagine how they feel about Gilliman. Not to mention, he was resurrected with the help of Saint Celestine and fought alongside her in his opening years. As she is the sister of all sisters, Gilliman had all the endorsements he ever needed. However, the ecclesiarchy wasn't so clean cut. See, the sisters of battle had a purpose. They killed bad guys with extreme prejudice and effectiveness. The ecclesiarchy killed innocent people and fiddled the kittles diddles. 
Gilliman was enraged that they even existed, as it was the complete opposite of what his father wanted, and his initial reaction was the desire to tear it all down. However, he stopped when he realized how destructive that would be, and how faith was one of the only things keeping the Imperium together. He had a priest, a representative of the Ecclesiarchy, accompanying him who wanted to suck his ultra cock. The priest would occasionally say shit that would piss Gilliman off. G-Man would get angry, and I shit you not, the priest got religiously turned on by the thought of him getting killed by Gilliman. After G-Man had assessed the situation and disposed of a few bad actors within the upper echelon of the Ecclesiarchy, he concluded that whilst this wasn't ideal, the faith of the Ecclesiarchy and its influence could be a powerful tool for good. So he basically said what he needed to say to get them on side, often debating with a few of the priests, but overall indulging their religious fantasies. I mean, Gilliman himself has started questioning if the Emperor is a god, since the Chaos Gods are clearly real. Overall, it's very interesting watching such a practical dude deal with shit such as faith and religion. Gilliman's experience with the High Lords of Terror, however, didn't go as cleanly. When he returned, he more or less instantly took control of the Imperium, ordering a planet-wide purge of hidden Xenos, mutants, chaos cults, and many, many corrupt officials. Millions were killed within weeks. He also heavily curbed the power of the High Lords as a loyalty test. Most of them passed, however, a few were forced to retire or felt as if they had lost too much power. Hence, they attempted a coup that involved custodian guards fighting Minotaur space marines before the coup was crushed and its members killed. The head of the Navigator Houses, once one of the most powerful people in the galaxy, tried to extort Gilliman and get more wealth to allow G-Man to use his navigators. Gilliman responded by having him flogged and dragged through the streets. Needless to say, Gilliman got his navigators without paying a single dollar over what they had agreed on. Either through diplomacy, execution, or humiliation, G-Man was able to get each and every High Lord on side in record time, making them very focused and competent while he went off to pursue his legendary Indominatus Crusade. Speaking of the Indominatus Crusade, how about the Imperial Navy? How did they react? Well, whilst they also fell in line, a lot of them weren't super stoked. The Navy isn't the most religious organization. It's full of proud, practical men and women who think very highly of themselves and who honor tradition. So Gilliman returning wasn't this holy shit, God is back type of vibe. G-Man is a micromanager that doesn't give a shit about people's traditions or pride. To him, warships are pieces on a chessboard. Their value is what they can do for him and the Imperium. He will always choose the best ship to lead in the most optimal engagements. He doesn't give a fuck if one ship has more honors or a better pedigree. The Navy, on the other hand, does. There was a battle group commander who, after railing a bunch of space coke, went on a massive rant about Gilliman and how the Primarch's institutions didn't rename her battle group correctly after they had merged with one another. She was very unhappy about it, upset that her glorious battleship wasn't the new name of her merged battle group due to technicalities. Gilliman also felt a similar way about the Imperial Navy, hating their desire for glory and honor, which they seemed to put ahead of actually decent battle strategies. Whenever he senses one of them putting pride ahead of practicality, he immediately removes them from command. In one such engagement, he even gave command to the Mechanicus fleet accompanying them, because they had the best plan to deal with an enemy stronghold. For context, Gilliman has never really given a shit about battle fleet honor, preferring to use a swarm of smaller ships to give the enemy a death by a thousand cuts as well as provide himself with a lot of tactical options rather than having these fuck off massive warships that just bomb each other's tits off until the one with the thicker shields and bigger guns wins. And he was right. He was able to take out the Word Bearer's flagship and also nearly claim the World Eater's flagship in one engagement, using a ragtag makeshift fleet of smaller ships. Overall though, despite their grievances, no Imperial ship commander is disobeying Gilliman or turning to chaos purely because he's got a bit of an overbearing boss that doesn't care about tradition. It's more so, you know, just petty ranting. I know, I know, you want to know how the Space Marines reacted. Well, 95% of it was similar to the Ultramarines. Fuck yeah, a loyalist Primarch is back. Let's get this bread. However, the 5% were very, very interesting and kind of embarrassing. As mentioned, the Minotaurs helped a few of the ex-High Lords with their coup attempt against Gilliman and were only called off at the last minute. This wasn't really them reacting as much as it was them being completely loyal to specific individuals. The Blood Angels were saved by Gilliman's arrival during the devastation of Baal, hence they were honored to see him and gratefully took the Primarch's reinforcements he offered. Well, you know, other than Gabriel Seth. He wasn't too happy about it. The Imperial Fists were also happy, being one of the first chapters to greet Gilliman due to their role as the Praetorians of Terra. The Dark Angels acted like fucking morons, which was disappointing as they are one of my favorite chapters. Basically, they thought Gilliman was coming to them in person because he found out about the Fallen. They were like, shit, he's gonna murder our asses. Maybe we should blow up his ship and kill him, then try cover it up. Yeah, they literally thought that. 
Fortunately, that moment of retardation passed and they spoke with G-Men and are now firmly on his side when they realize he just wanted to give them fancy new Space Marine warriors. The meeting with the Black Templars was spicy. Helbrecht is a staunch honorable man who doesn't get talked down to ever. He debated and even beefed with Gilliman. G-Man wanted him to help the wider Imperium. Helbrecht wanted to keep chasing Gazkull. Eventually, G-Man convinced him to abandon his selfish crusade in favor of helping the Imperium, but it was probably the most grief G-Man had gotten so far. To make matters worse, a sub-faction within the Black Templars rejected their Primaris reinforcements and started killing them, creating a mini civil war that the custodians themselves had to get involved in. Just goes to show that weaponized autism is a double-edged blade. We haven't seen many of the other original chapter's reactions to Gilliman. However, since pretty much everyone has taken up the Primaris and happily uses them, it's safe to say that the reactions have been very positive across the board. The Inquisition's reaction to Gilliman is a hard one to pinpoint as there are so many conflicting sub-factions within it. Some would be stoked, some would be cautious, some are probably plotting his assassination, some are probably plotting to stop the plots of his assassination. We haven't had much in the way of in-law examples, However, the High Lord representative of the Inquisition is on G-Man's side for now, so we can assume most of them are as well. The Mechanicus is also pretty pro G-Man and reacted positively. After all, Belsarius' call was instrumental in Gilliman's resurrection, and he is one of the Mechanicus' top dogs. It isn't all sunshine and rainbows though. Many of the cult Mechanicus are scared of invention and innovation, something that Gilliman has now authorized and encouraged, whilst others, like Call, love that shit and have been very happy with the new order. Either way, Gilliman is a much more effective and efficient leader of the Imperium, two things that get a tech priest cogs all nice and oily. While the initial Initial reactions were a bit all over the place, everyone has fallen in line one way or another. This is why the Indominus Crusade was so successful. An Imperium united and purged of corruption, pulling its resources into a common goal, is an Imperium that's going to be pretty hard to stop. Just goes to show that mankind has always been capable of winning 40k, they just had to get out of their own way. If you enjoyed the video and you want to support the channel, then pick up the hoodie. Buy one, get two t-shirts free is a pretty moist deal. Hit the subscribe button and hit the real subscribe button for more reactful content. Join the Discord for more memes and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.